When I was growing up doing art, making pictures, coloring, and drawing with my brother was like the most important thing in my life, drawing. When graffiti came into my life, my aha moment was absolutely the first time I painted a piece. When my buddy Phil took me down to that, that little wall, and it's still there to this day. I'm like, well, what are we gonna do down here? And he goes, well, we take the names that we write and we make, we like design cool letters for them and then we do like these full color things. It was just like the most magnificent thing. Like there was this drawing that I had in my hand that was as big as my hand. And I turned it into something that was eight feet tall and 10 feet long. That's all I wanted to do. I mean, graffiti was my thing. Designer is one of those words that's tough, man. <laughs> Designer, it's one of those things I used to introduce myself as, but now I don't. You know, I wear blue jeans and a black shirt, and that's been my uniform for 15 years. You know, I don't wear button-up shirts. I don't go to the design functions. I don't wear ties, you know? And it's not for any other reason than I just don't really feel comfortable there. You know, I feel comfortable covered in sawdust making stuff. I think most of the time I say I'm a furniture maker. Occasionally I'll be drunk at a function and I'll be like, I'm a furniture designer. <laughs> and then immediately people are like, oh, a, des a furniture designer. They all think it's fantastic sounding. My grandfather, he made birdhouses. You know, I didn't think much about like birdhouses or anything like that, but I always remember the texture of them. The thing that I always really, really liked about wood was how good you had to be to use it because there are no mistakes with wood, especially when you're at my price point. You cannot sell flaws. It's just one of those things that, whether you realize it or not, it's this medium that like you love, no matter who you are. I mean, all of us want repetition and familiarity because it's easy. But then the same part of us that made us want to start doing all this to begin with is always back there going, man, it would be cool to do something that we've never done before. In the last 12 years, I've done one thing, and that's make furniture. It's the antithesis of what I do with furniture because with this, it's like discovery, you know, and it's like you don't know what you're gonna get. Like with furniture, you sit on that path and you spend 12 years doing just this one thing and the results are certain. Well, with motorcycle shit, it's like you never know what you're gonna get. You might call a guy and go down to, you know, Lebanon, Oregon to buy a fender for 50 bucks and you might walk into a barn and there's like a original paint knucklehead sitting there and he wants to sell it to you for 5,000 bucks. But I always find some way to incorporate woodworking into it, you know, so it's not even really that far of a, of a stretch. A lot of things that I make that even shouldn't be made in wood, I make out of wood just because I just go to that. It's the first thing I do, like I'm making air cleaner covers for motorcycles out of wood. It's ridiculous. but. They're beautiful to me. You know, I'm like, I see them out of cast aluminum. I'm like, I can make that out of wood. It didn't take long to realize that motorcycle stuff and woodworking don't necessarily commingle. So I uh, talked to Tower about renting a little space in the back. So I set up and I built my little Harley Corral. And that's where I built the next three bikes that I did.
There is nothing like it in the world, riding a chopper, like a real chopper. One brake, death trap, long bike, sketchy as shit, hand shift, all your whole life hanging off the trident on the back of it, pissing fuel onto your crotch because your tank leaks. I mean, it, it's like, unlike anything you've ever experienced in your life. At that moment in my life, like, I needed motorcycles. It was the right place at the right time, and I just, I needed it for my creative outlet. I needed it as a new challenge. I needed it as some way to get that feeling again, like that I used to get with skateboarding and graffiti. Like, it's risky, it's criminal. Almost every time I bring one of my ideas to life, it makes everything worth it. You know, it's like, yes, you're still doing the right thing. And that's the reason why I chose furniture and not architecture and interior design, because in both of those mediums, sometimes you spend weeks and months and years to try to realize that one concept. You know, whereas with furniture, it can go from pencil to sitting in your living room, and you could be slamming a beer, high-fiving your buddies, talking about how rad it is six hours later. And that, to me, is awesome. I mean, that is why I do it. Because to me, there is no cooler moment in the world than when a piece of furniture of mine is, is done. every single thing you do as there is a reason no matter how horrible the road is you know there's a reason there's a reason you bought that house in 2008 and lost your ass there's a reason why you did it you know and sure it sucks but there's a reason why you did it there's a reason why you kick drugs you know there's a reason why you got arrested that time you know, there's a reason why you did, you know, there's a reason why you did all these things, man. And if you take away even one of them, like, you don't get into graffiti. You know, what do you get? My name is Tom Jones. And I think above all things, I'm a furniture maker metal worker and I build old motorcycles and when I'm drunk enough I'm a pretty good storyteller <laughs>